Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 7. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Now, Matthew means gift of Yah, and he definitely is a gift because he shows us Jesus Christ as King of Kings. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Now, last time we were talking about in Matthew as uh, when people do things to get the praises of men, that is alms, that's your good deeds, or uh, whether it be tithing, whether it be praying, and they do it for the praise of men. Well, Father says they've gotten their reward, and there will be no reward in heaven for those things. When we do work, when we do uh, good deeds, tithing, or praying, we are to pray for God's glory for his honor, not the praises of men. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 7 and it reads, But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. This vain repetition is saying the same thing over and over and over again. The flesh can become involved. Uh, chanting, uh, people start rocking and rolling. Father wants us to pray reverently. Verse eight: Be not like there, be not ye therefore like them, like who the heathen. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. We go to our heavenly Father when we are in need. We go to our Heavenly Father daily, talking to Him, having a conversation, that's prayer, without ceasing, seeking Him, seeking His Word, seeking a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, as the heathen do a certain prayer, a certain way of doing things, that sometimes the chanting gets involved and the body gets in, the flesh gets involved, we pray reverently. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Jesus Christ is going to teach us how to pray to our Father. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. He is our next of kin. He is our holy heavenly Father. Which art in heaven? Where is heaven? Well, it's wherever God is. Hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name. Verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Thy king, thy kingdom, God, our Lord God Almighty is king. Heaven and earth are his dominion. When we pray, we pray for his will to be done. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Now, we're going to go over to 1 Corinthians and we're going to go into the teaching of Paul. What are we talking about? What is our daily bread? It's the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 16 and 17 and let's read this. The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Question. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we bring many, for we being many, are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. When we take the bread in communion, and, or we take the blood in communion that blood is the blood that covers our sins it was the blood that was shed on the cross to bring us that perfect gift of salvation that upon repentance we are cleansed by the blood of the lamb that bread we partake of the the body of Christ let's go back into Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, what is this talking about? Forgive us our sins that we will can forgive those. Or we will forgive us our sins as we forgive others. As we forgive those who sin against us. Verse 12. I'm sorry, verse 13. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lead us not into temptation. God does not lead us into temptation. Lead us and protect us from the tempter who is Satan, who is the wicked one in the end days, the Antichrist. He is going to come sitting in the holy place claiming to be God. He is wicked. He is the tempter that tempted Jesus Christ. He's coming. We have to be prepared in these end days. Let's go over here and let's read a little bit more. We're going to go into James chapter 1. We're going to read verses 12 and 13. James chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, when the Lord hath promised to them that love him which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Very important. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Right there. When we are tempted by the tempter who is Satan, we send them out. We have been given power by the strength of the almighty living God in the name of Jesus Christ, get thee hence, Satan, and take all your little imps with, them, with you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. He's got to go. He has no choice. But let's go over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and read this. This, again, is the teaching of Paul. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Right there. How do we do it? We do it by the power and the might of the living, our living God through the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go back into Matthew chapter Six, and it reads verse 14 if you for if you for if ye forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you very important let's read this next verse but if ye forgive not men their trespasses neither with your father forgive your trespasses now if there is no more reason to let things go then we can't be forgiven unless we forgive others that's important but forgiving others is for our sake it has really nothing to do with them it doesn't get them off the hook of anything it's just that we can have peace of mind there will not be a blockade between us and our Heavenly Father. Because when we have bitterness or when we have strife going on, there's no peace there. When those things are removed, you know, that communication, the relationship, the peace of mind is there. And we can live in these flesh bodies with all the chaos and consternation and filth that's going on. And we can be at peace. Jesus Christ teaches us how to get it done. Verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, a hypocrite is just a play actor. Now, we've got many people play acting on a stage, claiming to be. And you, if you study and know what the Word of God has to say, you can understand, did God send this or not? Now, these hypocrites that have these, when they are fasting and they have this sad countenance, they, they have contorted their faces. They want everyone to know openly, I'm fasting for the Lord. Well, guess what? They have gotten praises from men. Oh, look how holy he is. Look how holy she is. And there will no, be no reward in heaven. Verse 17, but thou when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. We shouldn't even look any different than we do on a daily basis. Now, I'm going to talk about anointing right here. 
Many people do not believe that Christians should anoint. I'm going to put this up here for you. Strong's Concordance, G5547. Christos, that is Christ. That is our Messiah. The Anointed One. And when we go into 5548, akin to through the idea of contact to smear or rub with oil. So the anointing, the rubbing of the oil, and I do it on my forehead, as obedience. Now, the oil does not heal. The oil doesn't um, ease pain. It is the obedience that we have to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to go over here and look at what, what do we use to anoint with. We use olive oil. What I do is take, purchase a small uh, amount of olive oil, put it in a vial, and pray and ask for God's blessing on that oil. And then when I need it, whether it be for uh, anything I'm going through, I pray and I use the oil and I anoint. It is not, again, it is not the oil that heals. It is not the oil that brings us peace of mind. It is the obedience that does that. We use olive oil, and I'm going to put this up here for you. This is G1636. 1636. Eleah. Feminine of a presumptive derivative from the obsolete primary and olive. Now, we use olive oil. El Eleah. El is the is a title of God. Yah is the proper name of God. El Eleah. In the Greek, olive is the oil that we use for anointing. So let's get back into Matthew chapter 6, verse 18. And it reads, That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, Reward thee openly. Um, peace of mind is a beautiful, beautiful reward. But our treasure is not here. Our reward is not here. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. So just hold on to that thought. Verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. I'm going to read the next Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through to steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also right there. We don't look to be the reward here and on the earth. No, we live fine. Living with peace of mind is amazing. But our treasures are in heaven. Our rewards are in heaven. Now, when it talks about putting up things or seeking things, material possessions that, you know, you're going to be having rust on them, the moth's going to get a hold of them, those people that won't or don't have, they're going to break in and try to steal it. We set up our treasures in heaven that moths can't get a hold of. Rust is not going to rust them. Thieves cannot steal because our treasures are in heaven. Verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Um, this single is clear, an eye that is clear. And you can look in, at somebody in their eyes and you can, you can tell. Now, if somebody won't look at you in your eyes and they're constantly looking away and when they're talking to you, that's that's a that's a mess. But the eye is the light. So let's keep let's read another verse here. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now think about that. Who is the prince of darkness? That's Satan. Now I'm gonna go over here. Um, as our eyes are the light, we are not the light. You know, we've talked about it before. 
we're going to go over to John chapter 6, and we're going to talk about the light, the light that we show to others. We are not the light. We are a, a witness to the light. Who is none other than Jesus Christ? Let's read it real quick. We're going to be in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 15. And it reads, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. We're not talking about the apostle John. We're talking about John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Verse 8, he was not the light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John is not the light. We are not the light, but we are here to bear witness of the light. Who is Jesus Christ? Let's keep reading. This is for end days as well. Peculiar people, the election. You know there's a job coming. Verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about our Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. There's our treasure. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Our Heavenly Father is faithful, and his word is true. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now we know in the end days, Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, they will be here. They will be here for a witness of Jesus Christ and a witness against the Antichrist. Let's go over there real quick and read this. Now in Revelation chapter 11, we know that the two witnesses are coming. And they will be killed by Satan, the Antichrist. Now, we're going to pick it up at Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So, the, what, the witnesses, the two witnesses, I believe to be Moses and Elijah, they are going to be here to bring us comfort, direction, and instruction. Now, they are going to lie in the street for three and a half days, and then something's going to happen. Let's read it. Do you want to know when Jesus Christ returns? Let's read it. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Verse 13, And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And the earthquake was slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. That is when Jesus Christ returns. It tells us explicitly when Jesus Christ is going to return. The two witnesses, they will be here, they will give their testimony, and then Satan will rise up, kill them. They'll lay in the street for three and a half days. The world's going to be partying over it because the whole world's going to follow Satan. Billions and billions of people, except for the elect. When they rise and ascend to heaven, within the hour, Jesus Christ returns. Not before that, not after that, at that time specified by our living God. Now let's go back into Matthew Chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, mammon's wealth. And that is usually ill-gotten gains, something that 
People will lie, steal, and kill for money. Now, you cannot serve ill-gotten gains, wealth, and God. You cannot be ways of the world, loving up on world and worldly things, and serve God. Now, blessings of our living God, when we serve him, are beautiful. They are. But ill-gotten gains, ways of the world, when it says you can not serve God and mammon, period. We're in a vetting process, folks. We're here to make a decision. Are we going to follow our Heavenly Father or are we going to follow Satan, who is the Antichrist? Point blank. Everything else is just stuff. We're here for a decision-making vetting process that's going on right now. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? We have to worry for nothing. Our Heavenly Father is going to provide us for us. We do the work. We do what we know we are supposed to be doing. And Father is going to provide for us. Now, we know hard times are coming. Does that mean that we don't go and put things away for hard times? You know, and, and many people say, I'm just going to live on faith. They know what's coming. Well, you also got to understand that when people that start getting hungry, you know, that's when Satan started tempting Jesus. <laughs> he just, Satan started tempting Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. That was to show us, you know, Jesus Christ can handle it. Election can handle it because we're preparing for in days type thing. It doesn't mean you have to have a whole bunch of stuff. We we're looking about five months, two and a half, I think, specifically. But there is going to be a time that we cannot buy or sell. Father is going to take care of us. He is going to see that we are taken care of. Know that. Do your best as you can now in preparation for that time because we will not be able to buy or sell. We know that. Verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, this is important. This is talking about worrying about stuff. Do we worry? We shouldn't. Have I worried in my life? Yes. And it. what does it do? It uh, takes away my peace of mind. It keeps my mind like a hamster on a wheel going and going and going. Worry, worry, worry. Does that add anything to my life? No, it takes away the very day that the Lord God has given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are worrying about stuff, you're not rejoicing and you're not glad. Don't worry about things best you can. When you have a problem, anoint, take it to the Lord. He knows what we need before we even ask Him. Don't worry about stuff. And I have to tell myself this quite often verse 28 and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solemn solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these they're beautiful think about nature how beautiful it is father arranged them with the most beautiful clothing of the beautiful petals of a flower, uh, the leaves on the trees. Think about that. Let's keep reading. Verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith and i'm going to share this real quick uh, a few months back 
I needed shoes. It wasn't in the budget. My sister were my sisters were going through my mother's things, and they called and said, "Do you want to go through this and see if there's anything you need, folks? I have more shoes and clothes than I know what to do with." That's the blessings of our living God. Not that I'm any good. I'm only worthy through the blood of the Lamb, but He provides for us. Verse 31, therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles do, the Gentiles, the hypocrites, the heathen, for your heavenly father knoweth what you need of all these things. We are living differently. We live differently. We seek the kingdom of God. Let's keep reading. Right next verse. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that is key. Se but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Father is faithful. And his word is true. Either you believe it or you don't. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought of it for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Stay focused on the task at hand today. To, and we got to ward off evil constantly now. Is If you are a servant of our living God, you know, we got to kick Satan out a lot. And he has to go. By the glory and the power of our living God, through the name of Jesus Christ, get thee hence, Satan. He's got to go. Don't mean he's not going to try you again. But stay at the task at hand today, because tomorrow's going to have its own task, and it's going to have its own evil. Don't even go there. Stay in today. Well, that's going to be it for today. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. Hope you have a great day and join us again.